In this video tutorial, we're going to talk about how to create isometric dimensions. Now, just like when you create isometric text, we have to set some things up in AutoCAD to make that possible. So I went down to my D settings options down there in the grid snap area or the snap grid area, and I made sure I'm set to isometric. Um, that'll be very helpful. I'm going to click OK. I've also made sure I have my two isometric textiles, an oblique negative 30 with an obliquing angle of thir negative 30 and an oblique angle or an oblique 30 with an obliquing angle of 30. So I have those two set up. I've also made sure I have my isometric arrowheads one and two. Those are the ones I want to need for this. Now you can, you can draw these yourself. Um, but if you download the Create Isometric Text and Dimensions drawing file, you will already have those in the drawing itself. So the other thing we have at our disposal, which you'll also have to access to, is the Isometric Text Dimensioning Reference Sheet. So these two top isometric dimensions in the top plane, here's the list of commands to create those. Now I'm going to have these off screen. and. Uh, so I can refer to them. So we're going to start with the top plane so that I have to go F5 until I'm in the top plane. And there I am right there. I'm in the top plane. So the first thing I'm going to type is DIM TXSTY. That stands for Dimension Text Style. And I need it to be OBL negative 30. So I'm going to go OBL negative 30. Hit enter. So that's a dimension variable that we just set. It's waiting in the background now for when we deploy our dimension. We have to do another dimension variable, DIM VLK, which stands for Dimension Block. And that controls what are called the terminus symbols, or what we commonly refer to as arrowheads. And it says I need the ARR2. So I've set those two things. Those are what's going to deploy when I deploy my dimension, because I have temporarily overridden what it would normally do uh, and assign the textile I want and assign the terminus uh, symbols or the blocks or the arrowheads that I want. So I'm now going to go D-I-M-A-L-I-G-N-D, aligned. And it says specify first dimension line. I'm going to click right here. Then I'm going to click right here. And there's my first one. So the next thing I have to type in is D-I-M-Edit, D-I-M-Edit. And I'm going to click on Rotate. And it says specify the angle. Well, it's 30. All right. Then it says specify the object. So I click it and hit Enter. So just rotate it. Now I'm going to go Dim Edit again. This time I'm going to go to the oblique. And instead of typing in the angle first, they want us to select the object first. I don't know why AutoCAD doesn't maintain a uniform picking order, but it's the opposite of this one. So I selected it. Now it wants to know the oblique angle. It's going to be 150. And so there's my oblique dimension. Looks great. Um, now I'm going to do the next one, the one that goes right here. So I'm going to go uh, D-I-M-T-X-S-T-Y for dimension textile. And for this one, I need OBL30. I'm going to go D-I-M-B-L-K for dimension block. And I'm going to go ARR1, or Arrowhead 1. So I set my two things. Now I'm going to go Dim Aligned. Okay. And I always do that. I always put my hand before my G. I don't know why. So there it is. So now it asks me to pick my two points, which I'll do. And there we go. So the next thing I'm going to do is Dim Edit. I'm going to pick R for Rotate. It wants to know the angle. For this one, it's negative 30. So it's going to rotate it in a clockwise fashion. I click it, it rotates. I'm going to go dim edit again. I could also hit the space bar to go to dim edit. I'm going to go O for oblique. This time it wants to pick the object first. Hit enter. And then it wants to know the obliquing angle 210. So there's some very nice looking dimensions. You can see everything's lined up very nice. Looks great. So I'm now going to move to my front, or excuse me, my right ISO plane. So the first thing I have to do is hit F5 to get it into the right ISO plane uh, mode. So over on my screen that you can't see, I'm now going to look at my little handy cheat sheet. I'm going to go DIM PXSTY, 
and it says I need an oblique 30. I've already got that. I'm going to go DIM BLK, and it says I need an ARR2. So I'll hit enter. I'm going to go dim aligned. It's going to ask me to pick my two spots. I'm going to pick this one. I'm going to pick that one and bring it out about like that. I'm going to zoom in there a little bit more. I'm going to go dim edit. I'm going to go R for rotate. I'm going to click. It, oh, it needs to know the angle. It, it does that to me every time because they don't they don't main a, maintain a consistent format. And then it asks me to pick the object. So there we have that. Then we go dim edit. I can also hit the space bar. O for oblique. This time it wants me to select the object first. I hit enter and it wants to know the obliquing angle 210. There it is. Now we'll do the one down below. So I'm going to go uh, DIM TX STY for dimension textile. And on this one I need OBL 30, so I'm good. And I'm going to go DIM BL LK. And this time I want an ARR1. And so now I'm going to go DIM aligned. Ask me to pick my two points. I'm going to pick them. Bring it out. Then I'm going to go dim edit. And I'm going to go rotate first. So it wants to know the angle. My angle is 30. And I pick the object. So it's going to rotate in a counterclockwise angle. And then I'm going to go space bar. Bring me back into the dim edit. O for oblique. This time it wants me to select the object first instead of the angle. Hit enter and I put in the oblique angle 270. So there's some good looking isometric dimensions. And then I'll do the left one. So the first thing I have to do is hit F5. Oop, there it is. So now I'm in the angle I want to be in. I'm going to look at my cheat sheet. And so we'll move this over. So I'm going to go D-I-M-T-X-S-T-Y. And it wants to know the oblique. I need an OBL negative 30 for the textile this time. And then we're going to go D-I-M. Oop. Come on. There we go. DIM BLK for block, and I need an ARR2. So I'm going to go uh, dim align, and it asks me to pick my first one. So I'm going to pick right here, and I'm going to pick right here, and bring it down. So I'm going to go dim edit, and I'm going to go rotate. It wants to know the angle, it'll be negative 30. Click on the object, hit enter. Then I hit spacebar, brings me back in. I'm going to go O for oblique, select the object this time, and then put in the obliquing angle. And there's that one. So we'll do the last one right here. So we'll go DIMTXSTY. And I need an OBL negative 30, so that's good. I'm going to go DIMBLK for dim block. It says I need an ARR1. Oops, I typed the wrong thing. I typed an I and not a 1. Dim BLK. ARR1, here we go. Then I'm going to go dim align. And I'm going to pick my first spot right here. Pick my second spot right here. Move it out a little bit. Then I'm going to go dim edit. Oh, you got to type it right. Dim edit. I'm going to go rotate. It says it wants to know the angle. It's a negative 30. So it's going to rotate the text. And then I'm going to go space bar. It brings me back in. I'm going to go oblique. Then this time it wants me to select the angle, the object first, not the angle, and then I put in 150. And so we've just created dimensions in the left isoplane, the right isoplane, and the top isoplane.